That's on the speaker. God bless you. This is Pastor J.W. Smith, New Salem Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, we do want to say thank you again today for uh, joining us uh, as we partake uh, of, of a worship, a mini worship uh, for Thanksgiving. Uh, we thank God for those of you who are streaming with us on Facebook Live and those who are on uh, the phone line uh, fellowshipping with us. Uh, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we chose this time to um, come in with a, a Thanksgiving message to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, while at the same time, if possible, allowing those of you who are at home to uh, enjoy what's going on. I don't. I'm. I'm not at the church. I'm at actually at home, and this is a difficult task because uh, there are some things happening in the kitchen. Uh, that are uh, kind of disturbing me. And so I'm going to uh, haste, uh, move on in this message. And again, want to thank God. I do want to thank those of you who watched with us today for Bible study. Uh, we had a great Bible study lesson. Uh, and uh, we are here again, uh, giving the Lord thanks for this uh, Thanksgiving uh, Day celebration. And I want to start off with just a little bit of music from Loretta Ellison. Uh, which is one of just one of my favorite Thanksgiving songs. If you don't mind, just listen with me for just a few minutes. Feel free to sing along if you if you desire. We have so much to thank God for. Again, I do not only write to this music. This is Loretta Ellison, just one of my favorite songs. If the Lord's been good to you, just wave your hands right where you are right now. Let your heart tell God, thank you. Thank you, God. The Lord has truly been good. Thank you, God. God bless your heart. That's one of my favorite songs. Again, we're here uh, tonight to share with you a word on Thanksgiving. Uh, we thank God for those of you who are here. Uh, we pray that you let, allow your hearts and your minds to think about the good things God has done for you. Uh, that you would just take a moment out of your life to uh, let all of your troubles and your burdens rest. Uh, and you would just take time to give God some praise. On our phone line, I have one of our deacons, Deacon Charles Ambrose. And Brother Ambrose, if you would, it, just give us a short prayer. Okay. Are you there, Brother Ambrose? Yeah, sure. If you would, give us a short prayer. Father, we come this evening thanking you for all your ministries. Thank you for just allowing us to be a part of this time. Thank you, Father, for being so good, for being so kind. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. Father, um, we can't just give you thanks in this season because we look back over our lives, we see that you've been good to us for a mighty long time, and we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for just being you, for just being you alone. Father, we thank you for just giving us strength for closing up in our right mind. We got so much to be thankful, Father. We don't take it for granted, Father, to always just give you thanks, Father, for all the wonderful things that you have done for all of us. Yes, Lord. And all the wonderful things you're going to do in our lives. Yes, Master. Even all those blessing actions. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you again. We do want to thank you. Thank Brother Allen for bro for the prayer. Uh, and we're trying, going to try not to be long again because there's some things happening in the kitchen, uh, which is not far from me, that um, 
will, will require my attention uh, in, the very, in the very near future. God bless your heart. I want to share with you tonight a an unusual uh, scripture uh, as it relates to Thanksgiving, one that may not readily come to mind, uh, but it is a scripture that we do uh, that, that we deal with on communion Sunday, because again, uh, there are some similarities, uh, that I would like for us to take a look at. Uh, the thought for tonight is coming from the gospel according to St. Matthew. I'm coming from the 26th chapter, Matthew 26 verses 28 verses 20 through 28. That's Matthew 26, 20 through 28. And those of you who, who are there with me for communion, uh, on first Sundays, uh, know this scripture by heart. Uh, Matthew records this. He says, now when the evening was come, he sat down with the 12 and as they did eat, he said, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceedingly sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, he that dippeth his hand in the dish with me, the same shall betray me. The son of man goeth that is written of him, but woe be unto the man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It had been good for that man that he had not been born. Then Judas was betrayed and master and said, Master, is it I? And he said unto him, Thou hast said it. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat this, my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of a New Testament, for which is shed for the remission of sin. That's God's word for God's people. And just for a little while today, I would like to use for a thought, the salvation in Thanksgiving, the salvation in Thanksgiving. Whether, whether you know it or not, uh, we uh, are saved, amen, in our Thanksgiving. Amen, our Thanksgiving keep us. Uh, again, when we think of thanks, when, when we think of Thanksgiving, what comes to mind is the history that draws memories of the pilgrims fleeing uh, their homeland to a new land in search of religious freedom. Uh, they give thanks uh, according with the natives uh, in a harvest celebration. And they're thankful because those natives and God helped them survive in a strange land where they would have perished had it not been for the help of the natives, which was, which was derived from God. The Bible teaches that believers also a pilgrim. We too are pilgrim in a strange land because this world is not our home. And as such, just like the original settlers did, we too ought to give God thanks for our own, for our very survival in this strange land. Now, after the pilgrims and the natives stopped giving thanks together, they became enemies living in constant strife with each other. You remember them old movies about the cowboys and Indians and, 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 and the like. The Indians were pushed back to live on reservations. However, we as pilgrims, we serve a God who promised that the gates of hell should not prevail against us in our journey. So, but when you ask this question, based on the first Thanksgiving, when they sat down with the Indians and they, they were brothers and uh, they, they, they shared food and they shared experiences and they were thankful to God for all they shared together, how in the world did they go from a table of caring and sharing to become mortal enemies? The answer is very simple. It's found in the fact that they stopped giving thanks together. They stopped being thankful to God for all that he had done. Now, uh, they stopped giving thanks together. And when the joint thanksgiving ceased, so did the peace. For the pilgrims taking the land and resources ultimately became more important than sharing the good news of God. They were more concerned about what they could get as opposed to what God gave them. They stopped sharing the good news with the Indians and they began to take what they thought the Indians had. They began to cover it as if the same God that brought them over was not able to give them more of what they already had. Now, 
Those who once shared brotherly meals at the same table had become mortal enemies. They began forsaking the spiritual for the material. They began not to lift up the spiritual nature of what God had done for them. And they had begun to become materialistic in seeking the land and the riches that this, this new land offered. Sadly, I, I'm sad to say that the church of today is not much different. In our church, the same folk who sat on the mourners bench together can't sit on the same pew together. Folk who used to wear each other's clothes won't speak to each other. People who used to sleep in the same bed with each other won't set foot in each other's house. People who used to go to the same church, believe the same God and share a common faith are now tearing down each other's faith. What happened, you ask? The, the same answer, the Thanksgiving stopped. We stopped thanking God and started thinking about ourselves. The focus became what we did to each other as instead of what God did for all of us. So without our thanksgiving, our joy became our jealousy, our praise became our finger pointing, and our peace became our pettiness. So tomorrow, for many Christians who will not be together because of tension has supplanted thankfulness. There are a lot of family members who ought to come together giving God thanks and praise for what he's done, but they won't come together because their attention in those families. Why? Because we've lost sight of the fact that there is salvation in thanksgiving. When we knew how to thank God for all he did, God always blessed us. When we took time to thank God for the little we had, God always blessed us with more. The old songwriter said, I came from a poor family. I didn't have much. But one thing I know, the Lord had been good to us. And not only had he been good, he always, he never left us lacking. We may have to go to the next door and borrow a cup of sugar or a few eggs, but God never left us lacking. Somehow, no matter what was going on in our life, God was always there by our side to take us through. And we, we were a group of people who never minded giving God thanks and God praise for all that he had done. We used to give God so much praise that even those people who didn't follow Jesus Christ would stop and, and give us reverence, amen, give us room to praise God because they know that God had brought us from a mighty long way. And so we need to understand that our salvation comes through thanksgiving. In the text that, that's before us, this text highlights a meal that should have been a thanksgiving beyond all of all other meals. Why? Because it was a celebration of the Passover, where the deaf angel passed over the people in Go the Jew Jews in Goshen and slayed uh, the firstborn of Egypt, whereby Pharaoh had to let God's people go. It's the same Passover that celebrates the future in Jesus Christ, where the Passover lamb dies, that we might have a right to the tree of life. It should be a celebration because they're in upper room, which was ordained by Jesus. Jesus just told them to go into town and find a man and tell him that the master has need of his room. It ought to be a celebration because they were in upper room with Jesus, eating with the Lord, being taught by him. It was a time of celebration. Why? Because it was the last supper with Jesus Christ that he would eat in his, in, in his earthly journey. It should have been a time of celebration and thanksgiving because it was the same place where Jesus instituted the act of communion. And so what more could you ever, could you ask for in the upper room with Jesus at his last supper at the table with the master being taught by Jesus at his feet? Oh, what a time for Thanksgiving. The Lord has already come into Jerusalem riding the donkey and the crowd yell, hallelujah, hosanna. Ride on King Jesus, no man cannot hinder thee. Now here we are coming to the close of this Passion Week where the disciples have Jesus all to themselves in a room where he's serving them a meal. It ought to be a time of Thanksgiving. But just like it'll be tomorrow at many tables, there's going to be some mess on the menu. Yes, even the upper room where Jesus was serving the meal, there was some mess on the menu. And if we're not careful to give God thanks tomorrow, when we come to our table, no matter what else is there, there'll be some mess on our menu also. Why? Because one of the brethren has fallen out of the ark of safety. One who was called by Christ to be a disciple. One who was led by, taught by Christ to eventually be an apostle. One who was in Jesus' circle of discipleship. 
a learn of Jesus, who walked with him and saw the many miracles that Jesus performed in this land. This man had fallen out of the ark of safety. And if one of Jesus' own disciples can fall out of the ark of safety, we know we have to be careful ourselves that Satan does not turn us around. So now at this last meal, that ought to be a Thanksgiving celebration, there is mess on the menu because one of the brothers is out of the ark of safety. He has lost his spirit of Thanksgiving and he's begun to be focused on himself. He's thinking now like the Satan told Adam and Eve in the garden that Jesus is holding back on you. He's beginning to have a mind of John the Baptist when they told John the Baptist while he was in prison that the crowds were following Jesus. John sent Jesus word, said, Jesus, are you the one or shall we look for another? Because there was not a thanksgiving in it hard. But Jesus sent them back to tell John, tell John I'm doing what the father sent me here to do. And he ought to be thankful even in prison that the Lord is still upholding his mission because he will not let anybody turn him around. And so here we are in the upper room at the Last Supper. It ought to be a meal of Thanksgiving, but we find a brother in that room with the need with the wrong spirit. It's a wrong spirit because he has fallen out of the ark of safety. We all know this story too well, but I call your attention to the fact that Judas' problem was that he failed to see the salvation in Thanksgiving. Judas didn't keep on looking at what the Lord had done in his life. All God had done for him. He had three years to walk with Jesus. What more could he ask for? He saw Jesus perform miracle after miracle. What more could he ask for? He was there when Jesus fed the 5,000 with two fish and five loaves. He was there when Jesus turned water into wine. He was there when Jesus stopped by the pool of Bethesda and asked the lame man, would thou be made whole? He was there on Jericho Road when Jesus gave Bartimaeus his sight. He was there when 10 lepers came saying, sir, we would be healed. And Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. He was there as Jesus walked by the way. When a woman with issue blood came and touched the hem of his garment and he was made whole. He was one on the ship. When Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves and said, peace be still, how much can you ask for? To be trained and learned at the feet of Jesus. But somewhere along the line, Judas forgot about Thanksgiving and he fell out of the ark of safety, not remembering that there was salvation in Thanksgiving. And I want you to know tonight that when you come to your table tomorrow, when you get with your family, even now, remember always to give God thanks. Yes, it's good to see brothers and sisters. Yes, it's good to see sons and daughters. But oh, how wonderful it is to be in the presence of Jesus Christ. After you finish saying your hello and giving your hugs, you need to stop and ask the Spirit of the Lord to fall fresh upon your family this day. And then you'll begin to realize that there is salvation in Thanksgiving. First of all, there's salvation in Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving, first of all, it keeps the heart. Remember that. Thanksgiving, giving God thanks, will keep your heart safe. Luke in chapter 22, talking about this same Judas, he says, Satan in a Judas. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and the captains of how he might betray them, betray him. And Judas spent the rest of his time, rather than giving Jesus thanks, he was looking for a way to betray Christ. And some of us these days, as opposed to fit, trying to figure out how we can tell God thank you, how we can lift it up higher, we're busy trying to find ways to, to scandalize somebody's name, to make somebody look less than, to make somebody feel like they're unloved by Christ. Satan was able to enter Judas's heart. Why? Because in his heart, there was no thanksgiving. A heart where there's no thanksgiving is an invitation to the devil. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will hear my voice and open up his heart, I will come in and thank and, and sup with him. That has to be a heart of thanksgiving. But a heart that does not have thanksgiving is a perfect breeding ground for the ills and the will of Satan. The proverb writer says in Proverbs 4, he said, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of the heart flow the issues of life. And many of us are suffering many things because our heart was not in the right place. Many relationships have broken up. Many families have been destroyed because our hearts have not been in the right place. We need to learn how to give thanks to God all the time that he might keep our hearts secure. Jeremiah said that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. 
who can know it? But the Lord said, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins and give unto every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. If you have thanksgiving in your heart, the Lord will bless you. But if you have evil in your heart, the Lord will give you up to a reprobate mind. And so we need to take our hearts to the Lord. Watch this. Judas had already communed with the Pharisees. He had already communed with Satan. And so when G Judas came to Jesus' table, he could not eat the Thanksgiving meal because he was already full. He could not commune with Jesus because he had already communed with the devil. He was already full of the evil that had been put in the heart, put in his heart by the men, by the by the minds of those who sought to destroy the Lord. He could not eat what Jesus had because he was already full. And there are far too many of us that can't eat the word of God because we are already full of gossip. We are already full of backbiting. We are already full of, 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 of scandalizing people. We are already full of things that, that, that the flesh hungers for. Paul says in Romans 1, he said men become fools when they know God and don't glorify him. He said they are neither thankful and I, and I become vain in their own imaginations and they have become fools with darkened hearts. Paul says when you don't give God thanks, your heart will become darker and darker. The longer you go without telling God thank you, the darker your heart will become and you will become victim of your own devices. An unthankful heart, he says, is a dark place that lacks the sunlight of the Holy Spirit. But if you want to be in the ark of safety, you need to ask God to allow the Holy Spirit to shine first in your heart. When the old folks on the song that said, this is the light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That light didn't shine out of their head, but that light began to shine out of their heart because what comes from the heart it will reach the heart. And so we need to learn how to have a thanksgiving heart that the love of God may be shed abroad in our heart. Watch this. The thanksgiving heart is a heart that is hungry for the Lord. But a dark heart, an unthankful heart, is a heart that's too full of itself to hunger and thirst after righteousness because it's already full of junk of men. It's a heart too full of evil to eat at the Lord's table. It's a heart that cannot experience the salvation of thanksgiving. Why? Because it's full of envy, evil, and hate. Watch as the Judas had taken time to give God thanks for all that God had done. It didn't have to be this way. If Judas had looked back over his life and saw how Jesus had taught him, if he would have let the word of God penetrate his heart, it didn't have to end that way. He could have taken a lesson from King David, one who also got so full of himself that he could no longer have a thanksgiving heart. You know the story, of David, uh, that God had been so good to him. He began to think that he began to do things by himself. He began to believe the song that said Saul killed 1,000, but David killed 10,000. But when David had a thanksgiving heart, he began, he already knew that God was always by his side. It was God that allowed him to kill the lion and the bear. It was God who stood beside him when he brought down the giant alive. It was God who went before him in battle time after time and allowed him to come back again. But when David got beside himself, uh, he didn't have a thing given hard. He sat on the rooftop and sought to satisfy his flesh. And because he didn't have a thanksgiving heart, the Lord let him let him go his own way and it brought his house down. His heart was no longer protected by the word of God. When David looked back over his life, he began to realize it was not his enemy. It was not his family, but it was David himself that stood in the need of prayer. He began to remember that when he had a thanksgiving heart, the Lord was always on his side, but now his thanksgiving was gone and he didn't have nothing. So David went down on the knees and said, Lord, I want you to pray me with his up and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Created me a clean heart and renew the right spirit. That same David said in Psalm 19, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, we ought to learn how to take our heart to God and say, Lord, I need you to search me. And if you 
finding the thing that's not satisfactory. I want you to move it, Lord. Thanksgiving satisfies. It saves because it keeps the heart. But not only does Thanksgiving keep the heart, Thanksgiving also keeps the hand. There's salvation in Thanksgiving because it will keep your heart. But then there's salvation in Thanksgiving because it will also keep your hand. Whatever a man harbors in his heart, sooner or later, he will demonstrate in his hand. Whatever in his heart will manifest itself in his hands. He may be able to hide his hands for a while, but sooner or later, his hand will show what's in his heart. Proverbs 23 says this, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. He says, eat and drink, saith he to thee, but the heart is not with thee. In other words, if you have a, 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 an incorrect a incorrect hand and heart, you'll sit at the table, but your heart won't be there. That's what Judas was. He was in the upper room, but his heart was not with Jesus. He was at the Lord's table, but his heart was not with Jesus. He sat and dipped with Jesus, but his heart was not with Jesus. Jesus identified him. He said the betrayer will be identified by his hands. And if you watch a man's hand long enough, his hands will eventually tell you who he is. His mouth may never stop lying, but his hand will one day tell the truth. Jesus said these words. When I look for the identifier, I don't have to say anything because he's going to give himself away. The Lord said he that dippeth his hand in this with me. The same shall betray me. In other words, the same hand that received money for the life of Jesus will betray Jesus at the same table. The same hand that sold the Lord for 30 pieces of silver is the same hand that will go in the dish with him. Watch this hand. It's a hand that lacks patience and lacks respect for the Lord. That's why he didn't allow the Lord to go first. He dipped in the, in the dish with him. It's a selfish hand, a self-centered hand, a backstabbing hand, a backsliding hand. It's a hand that was completely disconnected from a thing giving hard. It was an evil hand. It was a dead man hand. It was a dry bone hand. The same kind of hand that Ezekiel saw in the valley of the dry bones and the hand couldn't operate until it was reconnected to a body that had the breath of God in it. And so the psalmist says in Psalm 26, he said, gather not my soul with sinners nor my life with bloody men in whom hand has mischief. He said, and their right hand is for the bride, but a thanksgiving heart will keep our hands. And so this, he said in Psalm 63, he said, I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands to your holy name. In Psalm 134, the same David said, lift up your hand in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Finally, the apostle Paul says in 1 Timothy 2, he said, I wish the men everywhere uh, would go down and pray uh, and lift up holy hands uh, without wrath or dissension. Uh, what is he trying to say? He's trying to say the hand uh, is a hand of God uh, in the life of men. Uh, when you allow yourself uh, to be in the hand of God, uh, he will control your hand. Uh, he will guide your heart and your mind. Uh, ain't the Lord all right? Uh, if you have a thanksgiving heart, uh, the Lord will guide your hand. Uh, you will have a hand uh, that's a giving hand. Uh, you will have a hand uh, that's a blessing hand. Uh, you will have a hand uh, that knows how to wave and tell God thank you. One might have said, if I can't say a word, uh, I will just wave my hand. Uh, and every now and then, uh, you ought to just wave your hand uh, and say, Lord, uh, I want to thank you. Uh, I don't know what to say, uh, but I'll just wave my hand. I don't know how to pray, but I'll just wave my hand. I'm going to wave my hand to tell a dying world that the God I serve is able to do exceeding and abundant above all things. I'm going to wave my hand to the same Lord that rode a donkey into the town of Jerusalem where they waved palm branches and they waved a hand and said, Ride on, King Jesus. No man cannot hinder thee. 
sometime in your life uh, when you can't say nothing, uh, just wave your hand uh, and say, Lord, I thank you. You know my heart. Uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, I got to leave you now, uh, but I want you to know uh, that there is salvation uh, in Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving, uh, it will keep your heart. Uh, Thanksgiving uh, will keep your hand. Uh, and finally, uh, that same Thanksgiving uh, will keep your hope. Uh, many folk uh, have lost their way uh, because they have no hope. Uh, look at what Jesus said. Uh, after Judas uh, was identified with his hand, uh, he said, The Son of Man goeth uh, as it is written of him. Uh, but woe be unto the man uh, by whom he betrayed. Uh, it had been good for that man uh, if he had not been born. Uh, in other words, Judas, uh, you don't have to do it. Uh, but if you go ahead and do it, uh, it's going to be better for you uh, if you hadn't been born. Uh, that sounds uh, like a hopeless situation. The unthankful heart uh, is a hopeless condition. Uh, Judas uh, tried to repent. Uh, he went back to the scribes uh, and he tried to give it back. Uh, he went back to the Pharisees uh, and he tried to give it back. Uh, but those men uh, could offer him no hope. Uh, but he never went back uh, and told the Lord he was sorry. Uh, I want you to know tonight uh, that you cannot make things all right uh, by taking your confession to the devil. Uh, but you got to see Jesus uh, by his own hand. Uh, Judas uh, went down uh, and hung himself uh, because uh, he didn't have any hope. Uh, he hung himself uh, until eternal death. Uh, until to eternal damnation. Ain't God all right? Huh? But I'm so glad huh, that the God I serve, he is able huh, to take the worst huh, that the enemy can do in your life huh, and turn around huh, for the best thing huh, that ever happened in your life. Huh? Ain't God all right? Huh? The worst day huh, in history, huh? the worst day huh, in humanity was the day huh, that they hung my Savior on an old rugged cross. Huh? Ain't God all right? Right, huh? But I'm glad huh, that he died because if he didn't die, huh, he couldn't rise. Ain't God all right? Huh? And when he rose, huh, he had the keys huh, to death, hell, and the grave. Huh? Ain't God all right? Huh? Judas by his own hand, huh, he was hung on the death. Huh? But Jesus by the Roman hand, huh, he was hung on the life. Huh? Ain't God all right? Huh? And that's why uh, there's salvation uh, in telling God, thank Ain't God all right? And while I got breath in my body, I'm going to tell God, thank him for everything you've done in my life. I've had some good days, and I've had some bad days. Sure enough, I've had. I've had some hills to climb. But when I look around and I think things over, all of my good days, I weigh my bad days, and I won't complain. Ain't God God, all right. Every time uh, Satan turned me around, uh, every time uh, the devil getting me down, uh, when I go down on my knees uh, and look back at what God done for me, I get joy uh, way down uh, in the depths of my soul. Uh, ain't God all right? Every time uh, I look back over my life, uh, I begin to realize uh, if it had not been uh, for the Lord on my side, uh, Ain't God all right? I came from a poor family. We didn't have much. But the Lord, he been good to me. Ain't God all right? I heard the writer said, keep my heart and keep my hand. Keep my soul, I pray. Keep my tongue to speak thy word. Keep me all the way. Ain't God all right? I don't know how. How you feel about him, uh, but I'm glad uh, that my life uh, is in God's hand. Uh, every day uh, may not be a sunny day. Uh, Sometimes uh, I have to cry, uh, but weeping may uh, endure for a night. Uh, but in the morning, uh, joy will come. Uh, I'm so glad uh, I've got a God uh, who is always by my side. Uh, Sometimes uh, friends uh, will turn their back on uh, some. Time uh, they'll close doors 
in your face. But that's all right. I got a God who is able to do anything but fail in the Lord. All right. I've got to tell God, thank him because he been good. He been better to me than I've been to myself. I've got to go now, but I want to tell you the reason why I thank my God. There was a call that went out to say who will go man bun. Abraham said I couldn't go. Adam couldn't go. Noah couldn't go. And David couldn't go. But I thank God that a call came out from the backside of Karen and Father, here I am. Send me out. Go. The reason I thank him is because he gave him a seed in glory. Stepped on the train of nature. Wrapped himself in flesh. Came all the way down through 42 generations. Ain't God all right? He tabernacled here for 33 long years. Cutting loose stammering tongues. Give me sight to the blind. Ain't God all right? They tell me that the same Jesus, uh, he was betrayed uh, by the same Judas. Uh, they took him uh, out of Gethsemane uh, one Thursday evening uh, and marched him all night uh, from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall. Uh, I got to tell God thank you because he never said a mounting word. Uh, I want to thank him uh, for 39 lashes, uh, for 72 thorns. Uh, I got to thank him uh, for being whipped in my place uh, all night long. I got to thank God for right early uh, Friday morning uh, for my sins. Uh, he went marching uh, up a hill called Karen. Uh, I got to thank God for the nail uh, in his right hand. Uh, thank you, God, uh, for the nail in your left hand. Uh, thank you, Jesus, uh, for the spike in your feet. Uh, I want to tell him thank you uh, because the thief said, uh, if you be the son of God, uh, come down and save yourself. Uh, but he decided to hang uh, just to say me. Uh, I heard uh, the songwriter said, uh, I don't know why Jesus loved me. Uh, I don't know why my Jesus cared. Uh, I don't know why uh, he sacrificed his life, uh, but I'm so glad. Uh, I'm so glad he did. Uh, he died, uh, kept on dying uh, until the sun went down, uh, kept on dying uh, until the earth had a seizure. And Begin to really rock uh, like an old drunken man. Uh, he kept on dying until the veil came down. Uh, it was torn in two. Uh, they took my Savior uh, and buried him uh, in a borrowed tomb. Uh, when Jesus died uh, on Friday night, uh, the Jews closed the Torah. Uh, when Jesus died uh, on Friday night, uh, the Islam closed the Quran. Uh, when Jesus died uh, on Friday night, they closed the watchtower, but I'm so glad. The reason I'm thinking uh, that's not how uh, the story ends. It was right early uh, Sunday morning. Uh, my bridge over troubled water. He got up uh, and stood on cemetery soil, uh, shook down the dying trout, uh, looked toward heaven, uh, and said, All power. That's what he said. He said, all power. Let me tell you this. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going home. Listen, 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 listen. There have been times in my life when I was with my roadies. And they said, why are we down in the trenches? We going to hang together. We going to be riding or die. But when the roadies got up out of our situation, sometimes they wouldn't look back and they wouldn't even speak to you. Uh, you all hear me. There are times in your life where folk you thought would go to the grave with you when they rose up. They wouldn't look at you. But my Jesus, the reason I thank him, is because when he got up, he didn't forget about me. He looked back and said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I'm thankful today that one of these old days, when the battle been fought and the victory been won, I'm going to read my title clear to a mansion in the sky. The writer said, and we know that when this earth, the house of a tabernacle were dissolved, we have another building not made by hands, eternal in heaven. I thank him because he's going to meet me in the middle of the air. 
I thank him because he's going to give me a tongue that can't lie. He's going to give me eyes that can't cry. He's going to give me a soul that won't sigh. He's going to give me a body that can't die. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to let me go to the land where the sun never go down. Where it's always how to how to never goodbye. I'm going to hide behind the mountain where the chilly wind don't blow. And when I see Jesus, when I see Jesus, thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Because I finally realized that there's salvation in my faith. When I thank you, my fears roll away. When I thank you, God, you wipe away my tears. Lord, when I thank you, you bear my burdens. When I think about Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. For all them up, sit down. Lord, I want to thank you. If I never had a problem, I wouldn't know you could solve them. So, Lord, thank you. Why the Psalms, I bless him at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth because the more I thank him, amen, the better it gets. God bless you. There's salvation in Thanksgiving. When you come to your table tomorrow, give God thanks. Make it a point tonight if you are a believer in God to call those family members that you have dissension with and say God or God is bigger than what drove us apart. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Tell them that our God is bigger than what drove us apart. Let us not Amen. come to the table like Judas with mess on the menu, but let us come to the table giving God thanks for all that he's done. And he will meet you. Amen. In your thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. God bless you. And God keep you. This is Pastor J.W. Smith from New Salem Missionary Baptist Church. 2186 Hawkins Mill Road in Memphis, Tennessee. Thanking you for joining us tonight. Reminding you that there is salvation in Thanksgiving. And asking that when you come together tomorrow, that you would let everyone, amen, look over what's going on and begin to tell God, thank you. God bless you and God keep you. As you leave, just tell God, thank you one more time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. It will keep your heart. It will keep your hand. And it will keep your hope. If you would just stop and tell God thank you. And mean what you say. The Lord will meet you in whatever you're going through. He's already brought you through more than you're facing right now. You would only just tell God thank you. There's healing in thanksgiving. There's a blessing in thanksgiving. There's deliverance in thanksgiving. There's hope in thanksgiving. There's joy in thanksgiving. There's peace in thanksgiving. There's love in thanksgiving. Tell God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes master don't have anything to say, but thank you. Can't think of a place to pray a big word. Lord, I just want to tell you thank you. You've been good. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Tell God thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord, I just want to tell you. Yes, Lord Jesus. Tell God thank you. No matter what you've been through, what you're going through, you ought to just stop and tell God thank you. Yes! Tell God thank you. You can help church wherever you are right now if you just stop and tell God thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I'm not thanking because I got to thank you. I'm saying thank you because I want to say thank you, Lord. Ain't nobody making me say thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, you all. This is Pastor Smith. Have a very blessed Thanksgiving. To God be the glory. Good evening.